Hi, my name is Chris and in this video we're talking about Shopify speed optimization. I know this is a hot topic, everyone wants to find out what they can do to have their stores run faster and unfortunately there is no quick recipe or quick action that will help you have a faster store. You will have to do the work and try to find out which are the issues that are slowing down your store. So you will have to understand the technologies involved, you will have to understand how they interact with each other, you try to download too many assets at once and that's why it takes more than the three seconds that Google says that we have to load our stores under. First of all here on the store you will have to understand how Shopify is showing your speed because let's say you run a test on your homepage on your URL and you get this result and then you go to your uh, Shopify dashboard and you see that the result that you just got is different from the one here. So first things first the score you see here is not for your homepage. So if we click on it and we go here we see how Shopify is calculating this score and this score is coming from three different pages the homepage, the product page and the collection page. They say here that these are the most visited ones, the ones that have the most traffic but I tend to think from my tests that these are the pages overall because for example you have product pages but you maybe don't have only one template for product pages and you may have variations in between the product pages. I found that if I modified all the templates to comply with the rules the speed will increase so if they say here for example if I go to this link uh, they will show me one page this uses one template so if I modify and make this template comply with this, their rules the score will improve but from my experience you should modify also the other template if you modify just the, the one here you will get a speed improve but if you modify all the templates all the product templates that you may have on your theme then you're gonna get an extra speed boost so you would have to go and edit not only the one template that they show you in here or the template that they show you here for this collection for example if you have multiple templates for collections as well you would have to edit all the templates that uh, you have on your store and this core is not updating right away so let's say you have some issues with some images on the product template and you go and you fix those so you then run your Google test and uh, the Google test shows that the image issues were fixed then this core won't update right away you will need some traffic on the store so in my experience this will update once uh, 24 hours or maybe 12 but I think 24 hours is the best bet if I go to test my home page I will run this test like three four times and I will try to make an average and that would be the real score not the one right now because it's gonna if you run the test it's gonna change a lot so you're gonna get 48 51 54 whatever so you will have to run the tests three four times for each of the pages you are going to work on to get the relevant score and then when you have the average of the three you will then average them out and that should be this average here so that is how Shopify is calculating the speed of your store once you understand that you will have to understand the implications on each of these pages let's just take a look at the results as you can see here the vitals passed but still there are some issues and uh, most of the issues come from the JavaScript and they say it's unused JavaScript but it's not actually unused it's unused in the moment the test was taken so in the first seconds uh, some of these JavaScript files were, were not running and that's why they say it's unused actually they are used later on of course some of them like this Yotpo code can be moved from the home page so we don't need to run 
Yotpo on the home page. If we look on the home page, there is no Yotpo module or widget or nothing. So in that case, Yotpo can um, be stopped from loading on the home page and instead loading it up on the collection page, maybe on the uh, product page where the modules should be in the case of the swell on the rewards page we don't have to load up this on the home page so yeah in this case this is not going to be used we would go and conditionally load this wherever we needed to show the yotpo widgets facebook is one that we should not touch actually because they have pixels and they have stuff that is important for the ad campaigns uh, we can leave that on there recharge is also one a snippet that can be moved on the collection and on the product page on the home page we don't have any recharge modules as well they are on the product page and on the collection page so in here we have a recharge module and then we have one on here we don't have to load up recharge on the home page then we have google google can stay there as well they have pixels they have a lot of tracking we don't want to mess up with that then we have this swiper the swiper is a plugin for carousels i don't see a carousel right away and i think that we could load up the um, swiper plugin a bit later then we have jquery which is coming from an app most likely these are the javascript files so again they are not unused not completely unused because you might believe that this javascript can be completely removed it's unused in that moment when the test happened you would want to either defer this javascripts if you have them on your theme.liquid or you would want to load them differently then you should go on to the other things that you can fix in here like off-screen images we should not load up images if they are not on the screen so that's why we are going to use lazy loading we could go and add the lazy loading property to this image or we could do a little bit more you can add a lazy loading plugin like this one lazy sizes and once you have it loaded on your theme you can do something like this first of all you will have your src which now will have an empty pixel as an image then you will have a data src which will contain your real image and then you're going to have the lazy load class which will mark this image as a lazy loading image it will load up with this empty pixel and then lazy sizes will replace the src url here with the real src from the data src and that's how you will be lazy loading the images so let me show you how that looks like i'm gonna open up a side drawer and that side drawer will have lazy loaded images first of all the images are gray and then the real files are downloading that's how you can allow the rest of the dom to to download and not block it with images like that the lazy loading property here will work but lazy sizes in my opinion does the job a little bit better after you took care of that lazy loading issue then you can go further we will not be able to minify the code from yotpo but because we said that we should not actually load up Yotpo on the home page, after conditionally loading Yotpo where we need to, we are not going to get this error here. Reduce unused CSS. Also, Yotpo and Yotpo. Again, if we are going to load up Yotpo just on the pages that it's needed. And this error here on the home page will disappear and as you see there are not so many actionable things to do here but as we modify and as we do some of the things that we just said other things will pop up in here but there is no big task that we can do to get this to 80 percent for example from one action we just have to do a lot of a lot of small things small changes that will improve how the page loads up and if you don't have enough 
things to do from the Google results, you can go on GT Metrics or somewhere else and have a test run there. Okay, so this is actually how Shopify is calculating this result. And if you go one by one and try to fix the issues that you see on the test for each of these pages, go to other tests and um, run these pages on those. If you have multiple uh, templates for products, if you have multiple templates for collections, you have to run tests for those as well and try to fix those as well. And uh, little by little, you will be able to fix the issues with your store. Thank you for watching. If you like this kind of videos, do like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.